we're back out here at the Little Lake. And today, well, it's all about this little guy. Is this really the future of swim bait fishing? Well, I'm going to let you know my thoughts. Stick around. Just for laughs, I'm going to try and skip this thing up under that pier. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> so it skipped up under that pier pretty easily. Ooh, I got one. I got one. Ooh, it's a good one too. Holy cow. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations! If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And if you remember, back in February, I did a video on the Core Tackle Hover Rig. I was lucky enough to be one of the very first people to try it. And, well, I thought that particular jig head was amazing. It's very versatile. It catches all kinds of fish. I can use it in so many different ways. And I liked it so much that I recently did a follow-up video showing you more ways that I've discovered how to fish it. Well, Core Tackle has just released their latest jig head, the Tush Hook. It stands for the ultimate swim bait hook. And well, this one here, this is the 4 aught 3 8 size. It also comes in a 2 aught 3 16 size and a bigger size, which I don't have with me at the moment. However, once again, I was able to be one of the very first people to get some of these. And I've been spending the past few days really putting these through their paces. I've been out on the big lake and here at the little lake, fishing them in different scenarios, different ways, trying to figure out just exactly what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, and how best for me to fish it. How can I catch the best, biggest fish with these? And well, I have some thoughts. Um, I've been using these for a few days now, and I do have a few ideas about what I like. And there are some dislikes to them too, but you know, nothing's perfect. What, what do I think about these overall? What are my first impressions? Well, they are very much different than your regular swim bait hook. You know, usually you'll have a swim bait hook has got the jig head here. It's got that ball jig head or it's got a, you know, a fish shape or whatever. Or you'll have a belly weighted EWG style hook. This is like neither of those. With those ball headed jigs, well, they're great, okay? You've got the screw lock ones and they can be exceptional at fishing those suspended fish. You know, they show up really well on your forward facing sonar and they have their pluses as well as the EWG hooks that have the belly weights on them. Those are also very weedless. They come through the brush just fine. So where does this fit in? What makes this stand out? Why is this different? And why is it better? Well, this actually puts the weight right in the middle of the bait. That bait threads on and it's kept in place by these ridges, it actually sits right over the top. That gives it a very interesting action. When I was first fishing this, it actually blew my mind. Um, I thought something was wrong because of the amount of vibration I was getting. It imparts a lot of belly roll, so the bait does like this, and it really, um, it's almost a serpentine action the way it goes under the water. So. Let's go ahead and I'll show you just exactly what I'm talking about. And I'll show you some of the footage of what I have of it swimming in the water. Let's take a look at the action of this thing in the water as I'm trolling along here. As you can see that hook really wiggles from side to side. That's, it's got a lot of tail wobble in the water got a whole lot of tail wobble in the water. So as you can see, it has a very different type of swim bait action in the water. That belly roll, to me, almost imparts a bit of a serpentine motion, especially on softer types of swim baits. Something like a Kitek that's very, very soft, that belly roll tends to be very gentle and that bait tends to swim very much like a snake almost to me. I mean, not literally because it's not as long, but I do see some serpentine sort of action. 
Now a harder type of swim bait, like these grass pigs, these Berkeley power bait grass pigs, something like this, which you can see, you know, is much more stiff. This actually has a harder throb to it. It actually, you know, goes from side to side much more quickly, and I can feel it in the rod tip much more. You'd be surprised at how much fishing one of these feels like fishing a bladed jig. You can really feel that side to side action, and you can really see it in the tip of your rod. The tip of your rod's doing like this. So when we're out on the water, what makes this different? How are we fishing this differently than a regular swim bait? Well, personally, for me, the first thing I have to do, the first thing I have to check, I have to see how well does it skip. And this thing skips tremendously well. I was amazed at the ease I could get this to skip. Now with a regular ball head swim jig, a lot of times that ball will want to dig into the water and you can skip it sometimes, but it's, it's never going to be smooth because that front weighted thing, it throws the keel off, it throws the action off and they tend to dig into the water. A belly weighted EWG kind of hook, well, those can skip okay sometimes. A lot of times that lead weight will grip in the water and you'll end up, you know, splattering all over the place rather than making a good skip. So it's a, you know, 50-50 proposition with those. These, however, I found consistently, time after time, I was able to make accurate skips, pinpoint sniper casts exactly where I wanted to. I'd like to be able to make some skips up under that up under that pier, so I'm going to make some skips up under there, and I've got the tush hook tied on. Boy, that thing does skip pretty darn good. Kind of maybe do a little bit of Alabama shake with this thing. Skip up in there. Kind of let it sink down for a second. Oh, that's grass. Thought I had me a good one. Thought I had me a good one. I did have me a good pile of grass. Oh, you know I'm going to figure out a way to Texas rig this thing. You know I am. Actually, it shouldn't be too hard to Texas rig. I could probably figure that out right now. Let's go ahead and skip right in there. But I like that. I can skip it in and I can work it back out. Okay, so it's got a hard thump in the water. It skips well. It swims well. It's enticing to those fish. What setups am I using? How am I rigging it up? Well, for the lighter one, for the 2 watt, 3 16 size, I've got this rigged up on my finesse spinner. 10 pound braid to an 8 pound fluorocarbon leader. You can see I've just got just a small little uh, Kitec clone. This is an Eco Tungsten, and you know, it's not quite as soft, but it's still plenty soft. This one's a little bit beat up because I've been fishing it all day, you know. But I have to say that the baits really aren't being torn up. This thing I've been brutal on. I've skipped it everywhere. I fished it everywhere. It's actually been hung up a couple of times. We'll get back to that. But you know, this bait is still 100% absolutely fishable. And this rod here, this is just a seven foot. This is my medium power. It's got a softer tip. It's got a little bit softer tip. Um, and I find that that works with this sort of setup. So that way I can actually lean into those bites more. I'm side hooking on these. I'm not, you know, jerking them like I would like if I'm flipping and pitching. These I'm doing more of a side sweep. I'm kind of leaning into those hook sets. Now for the larger one, the four odd hook, the 3 8 size, well, I've got this. This is my dedicated swim bait setup. This is a 7 foot medium heavy. Um, I've, I've got a the same actual spinning rod on here, but this has got 12 pound fluorocarbon all the way through. This is a 3.75 um, Strike King Rage Swimmer. This, you know, this is again, this is a softer type of swim bait. And this one, you know, this one actually is in really good condition considering how much I beat it up. This one has also been skipped under that same dock. It's been skipped under brush and it's been hung up on a couple of logs I've had to get back, you know, but the way that I'm working these tends to be a little bit rough. 
this lake is only about, you know, six to eight feet deep. So, and it's full of all kinds of timber. It's really, really snaggy. And that's something you need to be very cognizant of. That's something that you really need to think about is if there is a drawback to the tush hook is it's snaggy. It will catch on everything. I have had to pull that thing off of logs, out of grass, off of dock pilings. Now, I don't know if it's my inexperience or the fact that I'm fishing it less delicately than maybe it needs to be fished. I tend to be very brutal when it comes to fishing. You know, I'm, I'm, I want to skip it under there and I want to bring it out. I'm, I'm, I'm not very subtle when it comes to my gear. And so for a large part, that may be me. I may need to tone it down. I need to, may need to be just a bit more subtle. But, you know, I've already lost three of these things today in the water out there because they snag up. And that's not anything that I've ever done really with a swim bait head before, especially with an EWG style. You know, the ones that are supposedly weedless and snagless. But again, I, I'm chalking that up more to inexperience. The way this thing rolls with the hook, it may lend itself to being snagged up a little bit more often. We'll see if I can improve that as we go. But I find that I am getting snagged a lot and that's something that I'm not used to doing. Even in my waters, you know, I've been fishing them so long, I know how to fish my way around them. I know how to avoid the snags. Even with open hook presentations, things like jerk baits and wacky rigs, I don't get hung up that often. But today, I was getting hung up pretty often. So again, like I said, I don't know if maybe I need to change the way that I'm fishing, but it is something that was of particular note. Now, does it affect the overall performance of the bait in the water and of the hook in general? Absolutely not. This is another home run for core tackle. These things are amazing. They're definitely going to change the game. You will see copycats. You will see people copying these before long. And you have to remember, core tackle is the original one. Those are the ones that you want to get first and they are going to be gone. I'm lucky that I got mine quickly. If it's anything like the hover rig was where, you know, they were selling like hotcakes and guys had to wait four to six weeks while the inventory came back in, this is going to be a hot a ticket item. This is going to be something that sells exceptionally well. I have a, I have a big feeling about that. It's, it's not reinventing the wheel, so to speak, as a completely different object altogether. It is really a different way of doing a swim bait. I cannot stress that enough. As much as a ball head jig is different from an EWG style hook, this is different from those two and basically carves out its own niche in the swim bait world. And it's something clearly that those fish haven't seen. Now, does it catch fish? Well, the fishing has been really tough here the past couple of times I've gone out. I've only got two bites today and I fished a Waco rig, I fished a tail spinner worm, I fished a jerk bait, I dragged a jig, I fished the tush hook, and I managed to get two bites. And of those two bites, both of those came on the tush hook. So, you know, do with that information what you will. Now, I fished it yesterday at the big lake. Unfortunately, I didn't get any footage of that, but I did catch a couple smaller fish. I think the biggest one I caught was right at 1.8 pounds. But I do know that it is a proven fish catcher. And over time, as I become better at using it, you know, learn more things about how I want to work with it, I'm sure that catch rate is going to go way up. I mean, it's, it's such an intriguing hook. It's so different from anything else out in the market. I really suggest that you look into it and get some for yourself. So there you have it. The Core Tackle Tush Hook, the ultimate swim bait hook. If you're a swim bait angler, you're going to want to pick up some of these. They are definitely their own thing. The way they have that belly roll in the water, and it almost feels like a bladed jig when you're retrieving them, they are different from a ball head jig, and certainly different from a belly weighted EWG. I'm going to find out more about them as I fish them, but for right now, I think these things are pretty, pretty amazing. Thanks for watching Low Brow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.